They had us training on models. They thought it was enough, and so did we. And we blasted them out of the skies with camera guns. They filmed us marching for the newsreel, and the commentator says, watch out, Adolf, the boys in blue are here. From beginning to end, there were convoys, merchant ships of every shape and size, carrying everything the Allies needed to keep the war going. Someone who hated sailors designed the Corvette, what you'd call a wet ship. Ship's cat goes ashore and leaves these kittens for us to mother. One's a greedy little bee. I says to Dusty, I know which of these little you know what's is gonna survive. And I was right. The difference between an officer and a rating is that an officer lives in the wardroom and must never make a fool of himself. The engine room crowd worry about keeping the revs up. And the old hands keep checking on how many paces in the dark to an escape ladder. And the skipper? still in his twenties, but made into a lonely old man by what he carries on his shoulders. The speed of the convoy is the speed of the slowest ship. Five knots, some of them, or four. One was down to three knots. 28 days from New York to Liverpool. Some of the ships could have done it in five, but it took 28. 28 dawns, 28 dusks. Nearly a hundred ships to watch over. And where the U-boats were was anybody's guess. There's dawn in the sky for the changing watch. Another quiet night it's been. Day comes fast. The last of the night is a shelter in the west. Sailor's forecastle stinks of sweaty bodies, the bogey stove and rusty age. It's warm after a watch on deck. Old lamps is on for a yarn. The kid's up, beefing about Wally screaming out in his sleep again. Suddenly it's on. Before you can count them, eight ships will go, and 500 men. Convoy steams on. Ships don't care about men. There are survivors. Somewhere, the enemy. Then it's there. Rescue or attack. And before he makes his own decision, we all know what he has to do. No sign of the enemy. The echo is gone, and so have the survivors. I tell you, mine sweeping's a job they don't go after. Most of them don't. But we've got a skipper that's a real prize. Trim a man down fast as look at him. But you know, closes his eyes to plenty too. Not much spit and polish here though, which is just as well. The old mine sweepers had our best days. That's what you get for staying local. Local is Australian and Pacific waters. You can bet it's never closer than a thousand miles off the old home port. You can do 30 days at sea and never step a foot ashore. We clip off this mine one day and the old man's not sure if it's some new type. Don't look like no enemy mine. Neither it would. Turns out to be Admiralty pattern, one of our own. So we're off to sink her with rifle fire. We've done it dozens of times, and I always wonder what she'd be like if a bullet hits one of the horns.
Perth, Sydney, Stewart, Yarra, Vampire, Voyager, Vendetta, Waterhen, Parramatta, Hobart. Persian Gulf, Palestine, Egypt, Greece, Crete, Bardia, Benghazi. Did we ever get around the Mediterranean in 40 and 41? Aussie troops on Aussie ships. It was on all the time. All troops, all ships. In a way, it was always the same. Some we took in to fight the land war. Some we pulled out after they'd been overwhelmed. One way you could always tell if they had no wounded yet, they were going in. Carrying troops makes you think of the big difference between soldiers and sailors. No matter how much a part of his unit he is, the soldier finally comes out an individualist. At sea, you go where your ship goes. What happens to the ship happens to you. And there's not a way in the world you can escape it. You get used to having the diggers aboard. You get used to them cluttering the ship up with their gear. You get used to saying, Uru, you'll be sorry. And the digger says, Uru, you old so-and-so, hope your ship sinks. And if it should. Yeah, he would be sorry. They said we'd be a week or 10 days. There was nothing ashore, but 10 days make and mend sounded like a good idea after the spud run. It was the skipper himself who started on about the chief taking himself seriously. Chief thinks he's back on a battleship, the skipper says. Battleship? We're 1,100 tons of rust, mate. That's us. Young Joey had a yarn about being picked up by a Russian merchant ship. Reckons half her crew were women, and... Ah, well, that's his story. Then we all got to talking about old ships we'd had except the kids who'd never had any other ship. That was the time Chocker talked about his old ship. Left her the day she sailed out of Sydney. Mail had just come aboard, Chocker said. And up comes the signal for his transfer, and him being with her since she was commissioned. Almost like an omen, he said it was. One of his mates had reckoned it was the omen, all right. Chocker never talked about Perth again. Only that day when we were all yakking our heads off. You talk about make and mend. Mate, what we started that day looked like a flame and refit. Jimmy even has the boys over the wall painting ship's side. But there's a palm cruiser with us. He's been sending his walrus out on recce. And he comes back with pictures. Pictures, mate, that makes the Admiral himself jump up and down. Ten days make and mend. Ten days my black you know what. The hook's up five hours after we drop it and we're on our way to join the battle fleet. How does it feel to be sailing with the battle fleet? You're there with a capital ship, a squadron of cruisers and perhaps 20 destroyers. You're looking for the enemy. The odds are in his favour. You've been sighted by his reconnaissance aircraft so the element of surprise has left you too. Ships close up to action stations. There will be wild and vivid action. Ships will be sunk, men will die. It's as certain as waiting for the dawn. On deck, there are dry mouths and watchful eyes. Below, there's sweat and listening ears.
by the time it is over, all senses are confused by the huge barrage of sound. The fleets count their losses and withdraw, licking their wounds. Men think of men whom the action has blown to pieces, as maimed, poisoned with fuel oil, as drowned, as shocked beyond repair. And they thank their living Christ for a whole skin and a mind which will return to normal. Hey, there was this kid, see, down at Flinders, and he turns out a real seasick Joe. So he puts in to go on boom defence at Darwin. When I says, you're a mug, kid, they'll put you on a corvette for sure. But they don't. He gets his Darwin draft. Even the boom ship's no good to him. So he gets ashore. First thing is, he gets himself a rupture on the heavy gear. He ends up tropo with the heat and the boredom. When I says, you'd have been better with the seasick, son. But I'm wrong again. They send him south a couple of weeks before the nips come over. Do you know how much oil a cruiser burns at full speed? Neither do I, mate. But I tell you, you spend half your life meeting up with tankers and oil barges, loading bunkers. The ginger beers come up with their very funny signs. You can't get a smoke and the whole shop stinks like a refinery. Then you're off to sea. Fresh air? Tastes more like a seaside Turkish bath. The whole watch on deck gets stood to for chipping. And chipping. And chipping. And chipping. You get so you reckon you're a lucky coot if they drop a paintbrush in your hand. And I'll tell you something else. The older the ship, the more they expect the brass to shine. One of the big difficulties is keeping a crew busy enough. There's a limit to the amount of PT you can impose. Deck work has to end somewhere. And then they're on their own to work out angers and frustrations on deck games. Sometimes you're just loafing, dreaming dreams you'd be better off without. Pacific might be the closest ocean to home, but she's still a long way from where the heart is. But a sudden tension runs around the ship, like a chill wind across the tropic sea. The boys don't know it yet, but this time, somehow, I know whose number's coming up. Naval mine is a highly dangerous weapon. Unquote. When you got 50 odd of them stowed away in one of His Majesty's mine layers, you have what you could call a highly dangerous ship. Quote, unquote. It's one of the standard larks, only young Fred's off on compassionate. They uh, sent us one of these Aussies for replacement. Well, you can see the mine's got him worried a bit. So, naturally, everybody puts on the big casual act. Blackie snips away at the whiskers, see, and says he hears how we're off to drop this lot a couple of miles off old Jerry's coast. <laughs> everybody plays it up. <laughs> yeah, we say, that'll be right. That's what they say. Ozzy stays quiet, not saying nothing. Here. Yeah. But who do you reckon the joke's on? Someone don't half give it Blackie for a Jonah when we do hear where those mines is for her. Quarter of a mile out from the enemy coast, sir. We're laying mines, see? Bright moonlight it is. Then there's this aircraft come over. Bad moment, that. 
But he must have been dreaming. Goes straight on overhead. Never sees us. Should have shot that joker down, Ozzy says, but I put him right. In this game, the motto's live and let live, I tell him. Funny, Ozzy likes that. Gets a permanent transfer on the strong of it. We're on patrol, Indian Ocean. It had been months since we saw a shot fired in anchor. Everybody is sleeping on deck. Warm tropic nights. I tell you, she takes a bit of beating. Shropshire was on loan. Sydney had disappeared late in 41. At that time, no one knew the story. There were never any survivors to tell it. Old China gets onto a game called Mahjong. Chinese it is, I reckon it would be. One thing for sure, Shana makes his fortune. Perth had gone in Sunder Strait, March 42. Her survivors were prisoners of war. They get on to a new lurk. Every man on the charge gets an extra two hours PT. Then Canberra, August 42, in an action which went so wrong. So they learned Shropshire from the Royal Navy. Some bright spark invents a horse racing game. They run the cup every afternoon. And they say more money changes hands than the bookies make at Flemington. You get down to writing home. But what is there to say? You're wasting your time, mate. Ten to one she's on with a yank down on Bondi. Arctic convoys proved to be an experience in cold almost beyond belief. Unfortunately, the route lay beyond the range of protecting aircraft, but comfortably within the range of enemy machines. You don't like to go on about action too much, but Arctic convoys, oh mate, you don't want to think about them. Enough ships did get through. It cost too many good mates. Pacific Islands, dusky maidens in grass skirts. Mate, I'll tell you what there was. Bad water, Atterburn, mosquitoes and Japs. On towards the end we got some funny jobs, like cruising just offshore with one destroyer with us. Then come stand to. Then lob a few shells inshore. Someone says, what's the target? You know what they say? They say, pick your own target. Seems like we're a sitting duck if you ask me. From up top they watch ashore, and they're watching both sides. It's getting dark, and still we're stooging around the island group, the destroyer with us. All night we're on stand to. Every once in a while, the destroyer blasts a few rounds of tracer ashore, and we let go with a few shells. No one has any idea what it's all about. 
not until just before first light. Then we know. It's the invasion fleet and they soften up that shore as only the Yanks know how. Some of us get the job of running the boys ashore. It goes quiet. Never a shot from ashore. All they find is a handful of Japs that got caught in the barrage. Looks like a walkover. Everyone relaxes, waiting for the support convoy to come up. Up they come and everyone reckons she is going to be a walkover. Suddenly she's on. Heavy bombers, kamikaze, we got the lot. What he missed out on since Pearl Harbor, the nip reckons he'll pick up today. Did you ever hear of a walkover that was a shambles? No one can talk his lingo, but we reckon he was saying, yeah, and there's another thousand islands between here and Tokyo. Whatever might have been the rights and wrongs of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, that's the way it did end. We were on Pacific base when the news came through waiting to have another bash at him further north. Guess who was still on convoy escort when she finished? Best convoy of the war, that one. The last. Convoy routine and security measures will remain effective. There'll still be some maniacs around who want to fight the war on their own. It was months before some of us got home. Funny thing, that was the time quite a few of the boys started to go a bit round the bend. Ah, she was a great little navy, all right. But what you've seen, mate, you haven't begun to see the half of it. Thirty-nine to forty-five cost thirty-five ships of the Royal Australian Navy. It cost two thousand one hundred and seventy officers and men killed. It cost wounds of the flesh and incalculable unseen wounds from the horror, the exposure, the strain and the fear. She was a great little navy, but many of those who paid the price are paying it still. <laughs> 